Dr. Phil. I'm so sorry for your loss. I know exactly how you feel, sadly. Parents of school shooting victims come together. You guys did nothing wrong. You were let down by the people who should have protected your daughter at that school. And one of the littlest victims. She asked to honor her best friend, A. Marie. The parents had given permission for her to be here. She survived the Uvalde shooting. You know, I don't have too many friends, so that's really hard for me. We're so happy that you're here. I know Amory would be too. The little girl who played dead. It was a very bad situation, and I did all I could. You slept in your shoes for a while, right? Because if anything happened, I... Ready and go. If you think this is a brave and courageous little girl, stand up for her right now. On May 24th, 2022, an open fire inside Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas, killing 19 children and two teachers. It was the deadliest school shooting since 20 young children and six adults were killed at Sandy Hook Elementary School in Connecticut nearly a decade ago. Yesterday, we met Kimberly and Angel, who lost their 10-year-old daughter, A. Marie, in the Uvalde shooting. Amory's best friend, Chloe, was with her that day inside classroom 112. They were holding hands just moments before Amory moved from her hiding place to call for help. Chloe's parents, Reuben and Jamie, revealed what she told them happened that day as their daughter watched her classmates and teacher die right before her eyes. Here's what happened yesterday. We come on the air tonight after another mass shooting in America. According to police, just after recess is when it happened. Angel Garza's daughter, Amory, was just two weeks past her 10th birthday when he walked this path on Tuesday, dropping her off at school for what turned out to be the very last time. She didn't deserve that. No. She didn't. Oh, she didn't. I just want to protect my little girl. Do you two feel like you failed her? I do. Yes. Just as her father, I feel like it's my job to protect her. When the first gunshots were fired, you, you heard them at home. Yes. I just remember just going down, and I was starting to panic and freak out. I didn't know what was going on. And you now know that it was anything but under control, of course. At one point, a girl came out that actually looked like she had been dipped in a pool of blood. Chloe came out, and she was just so hysterical. She said, he shot my best friend. She's not breathing anymore. Then you didn't know that her best friend was your daughter. Yeah. From the moment she spoke that name, your world changed forever. I never felt that way before in my life. <laughs> The anguished cries of desperate parents after the massacre at Robb Elementary. <laughs> Pleading with police to rescue their children. I just want my baby home. I don't care. I don't care about anything else. Jamie and Reuben's daughter, Chloe, was with Amory that fatal day. Amory said, what, what if we can call for help? Chloe said she squeezed her hand tighter to pull her back and said, no, I feel like it's safer over here. She slipped out of Chloe's hand, and she said that's when the, uh, sh the shooter came in. Does she feel bad about letting go of her hand? Absolutely. That's the survivor's guilt part. She says um, that it's her fault. She shouldn't have let her hand go. It's hard for her. She went to check on her later, right? Yes. She said she was laying there, not breathing, so she hugged her. She smeared blood on her to make it look like she had been yes. shot? Yeah. So she heard the music he was playing get louder, so she knew he was coming? Yes. Was he saying something she could hear? He was telling them, um, you all will die. Authorities tonight confirming that the gunman was in the elementary school for an hour or more before he was shot and killed. 77 minutes passed from the beginning until the end. 
all those kids were probably just thinking, where, where are my parents? Where's my help? She'll never know I was trying so hard to get in there. <laughs> 19 students and two teachers' lives were taken from classrooms 111 and 112. And there were very few survivors from those rooms, but one of them uh, is here today. She asked to honor her best friend, A. Marie. Her parents have given permission for her to be here. Chloe, come on out and join us now. Hi, Chloe. Hi. So proud to meet you. I'll put you right over here between your mom and dad. Well, Chloe, thank you for coming and talking to us today. Uh, you're wearing purple. Tell me why. For my best friend, Amory. Uh-huh. Amory liked purple? It was her favorite color. It was? Yeah. She was your best friend? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, what was she like? She was very happy, and she always wanted new friends. She was... Very sweet and kind, but she also could be sassy whenever she wanted. Yeah. She was sassy, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you miss her a lot. Um, and let me tell you so you're not sitting there thinking about it. Um, I'm not going to um, ask you to tell us about that terrible day. I've seen where some other people have asked you to do that, and uh, I think that was a big mistake on their part, and I'm not going to do that. I'm sure it's been really hard since then. It's been four months. What's, what's been the hardest thing for you since it happened? Um, losing friends, and... Now I don't have too many friends, so that's really hard for me. Mm -hmm. Do you talk to yourself about it? Do you say things to yourself about it? Yeah, sometimes. What do you What do you say? Like, could I do Could I have done more to help? Mm -hmm. And how do you answer that question when you ask yourself that? I tell myself that it was a very bad situation. And I did all I could. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that? Not all the time. Not all the time? Mm -hmm. What do you think you could have done that you didn't do? I think that I could have, like, helped some of my friends, like, hide better. Mm -hmm. Well, do you think you could have helped A. Marie more? Yes. How so? What could I you could have done? told her to get under the table. Mm -hmm. From the outside looking in at the things that you did, uh, I'm just overwhelmed at everything that you did. I, I, I look at what you did and wonder if I would have thought to do even half of the things that you did. I, I don't know how you thought of the things that you thought of and did the things that you did. I, at, at your age, I'm just in awe at your courage and your bravery. These are Amory's parents, as you know, and I'm sure they're of the same opinion. What do y'all have to say to Chloe? She's the best friend that Marie could ever have. And I'm so glad that Marie and her met. I'm just so happy that you're here. We're so glad no matter what you think you didn't do or did do, we're so happy that you're here. And I'm, I know Amory would be too. 
You slept in your shoes for a while, right? As if anything happened, I wanted to be like able to get ready and go. If you think this is a brave and courageous little girl, stand up for her right now. Monday on an all-new Dr. Phil. It is the number one issue on everyone's mind. Things you can do to make ends meet. Fighting inflation. I tell you what's on sale, I tell you what coupon to use, and how much you're going to pay. From couponing, you say that you save $6,000 the first year. It's actually $10,000. To cutting consumer costs. How much is this cut down on what you spend? It probably saves my family about two to $3,000 a year. That's Monday. Nobody wants you to feel bad that you're here and some other student isn't because things, you know, there, there's, you, you can't make sense out of nonsense and th there's no sense to what happened. It should have never happened. It was a bad person doing bad things. And, you know, we live in a good world. This is a good place with good people. There's no reason that one student got hurt and another one didn't, or one person lost their life and another one didn't. And it's certainly not your fault or under your control. And you were a good friend. You were a good friend to A. Marie. You were a good friend to your other friends that were there. And we just thank God that you're here and that you made it out alive. And I, I hope that you get to the point where you're really proud of the things that you did and really proud that you were a good friend to your friends because you were a good friend to your friends. You, you tried to help yourself, you tried to help your friends, you tried to help the teacher, you tried to do everything you could. And that's all anyone can ever ask of themselves. When you catch yourself thinking really negative thoughts about you and saying bad things to yourself about yourself, I, I, I hope you'll remember this conversation and say, when I was talking to the bald guy, he told me I need to say stop. Stop thinking that and replace that thought with something else that is really more accurate. Your mom loves you, your dad loves you, Amy Marie's parents love you, and all of us are really proud of what you did. So if you're getting into that being negative, you need to stop yourself. And I mean, really just say in your mind, stop, and think of something positive because you are a courageous and brave little girl. And you know, look at all these people that are out here. If you think this is a brave and courageous little girl, stand up for her right now. Everybody thinks so. Thank you. You need to think so, too. The former Parkland student says she knows all too well the impact of school shooting. It's tough, but you've made it through the hardest part, and it does get better. A never-before-aired interview I did with Jeffrey Dahmer's father. If your kid is going around collecting dead animals, cutting them open and exploring them, how do you not know that? I guess I was a little bit naive. It was said that he had even impaled a dog's head. He told me that he decapitated and put on a stake. Tell me about the locked wooden box. If I would have opened that box and found what was in there, I, I think I would have lost it. But we now know the box contained a human head. 
Psychopaths are poor. Sociopaths are me. People that become serial killers start learning how to lie and manipulate when they are very young. They're always looking. They're always hunting. There are Jeffrey Dahmers walking among us right now. A Dr. Phil three-day special starting Tuesday. A South Florida community in agony today. Police say their former student killed 17 people and wounded more than a dozen others in Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. That's in Parkland. <laughs> Frightened students ran down hallways, stepping over discarded backpacks. He went up and down the hallway, just banging and shooting into the classrooms. He shot through my door and broke the window. No parent should ever have to send their kids to school and have them not return. We've got to find a way this to stop. There's a former Parkland student, Christine, says she knows all too well the impact of school shooting and the impact that it can have on a survivor. Christine, you, you've been listening to what Chloe's had to say, and this was... 2018, so you're four years down the road from this. What advice would you give to Chloe? I think one really important thing is to learn to be able to sit with that anger, that frustration, that sadness, even that guilt. While sometimes it is good to just focus on the positives, um, you need to learn to sit with it and come to accept it before you can really start and move on with your life. And I think that's a really important thing. And I also think just having a community around you. You have loving parents and I love you so much as well. And we all are very supportive of you. Um, that has really helped me through my time because I've had, you know, classmates who can understand what I'm going through. My sister, she was at the school at the time as well who understood what I was going through. And having those people and even having, um, you know, survivors from Columbine, Sandy Hook, The Pulse, all coming in to help support our school and give us advice and hopefully that's what I want to do for you. Um, give you that community to show that, you know, it's tough, but you've made it through the hardest part and you're so strong and it does, it does get better and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't go away ever, but you learn to live through it. Yeah, that's, it's, it, to be honest, it doesn't go away. I mean, that's, that's why I said to y'all, you won't get over this. You'll never forget it. You'll never forget the pain. It'll just be something that you make a choice to put in a different place and, a, and approach in a different way. And you have to be really, really patient with yourselves. Um, and people grieve in different ways. And I'm going to I'm going to thank Chloe and 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 let her go because we're going to talk about some adult things and you've always heard me say she's very grown up but you don't want to involve children in in adult things and we're going to meet a father when we come back who knows exactly how Kimberly and and Angel are feeling he lost his 14 year old daughter Gina uh, four and a half years ago on Valentine's Day in the Parkland school shooting and um it helps to talk to people who have been through this. We'll be right back. It's hard to resolve the guilt. You guys did nothing wrong. You were let down by the people who should have protected your daughter at that school. Talk... Well, joining us is Tony. He, too, is part of a club that no parent ever wants to join, ever wants to be part of, because like Kimberly and Angel, he, too, lost a child. His 14-year-old daughter, Gina, was lost to a school shooting at Parkland, Florida, on February 14th, 2018. Tony? Yes. Thank you for being here and joining us. You say it was hard... In the beginning, of course, it's hard now, but that it was just really minute to minute uh, in, in the beginning. 
and they they understand that. What, what do you have to say to these these precious folks here? First of all, I'm so sorry for your loss. I know exactly how you feel, sadly. Um, right now, just focus on yourselves. Get through every day, every hour even. Uh, I don't remember anything about the first three months. I'll be honest with you. Um, you're each going to grieve in a different way, and that can be stressful on a marriage. I, I sit here and I watch the two of you, and I see my wife and myself in some of our interviews early on, and uh, even today. And uh, I just want to let you know, it's hard to resolve the guilt, but you guys did nothing wrong. You were let down by the people who should have protected your daughter at that school. And being angry, you're going to be angry. You lost the most precious thing in the world to you. That's not going to go away. As Dr. Phyllis said, the pain is not going to go away. But what you will find as you work through this, and you will be working through it, is you'll find a way to move around the hole in your life and to function again. Um, sadly, you'll, you'll never have a purely happy day. Um, I think in the picture you had another child, and it's, it's very difficult to be there for them while you're grieving the loss of your daughter. But um, as painful as that loss is, um, she was a great kid. She brought joy to your lives. And you have to remember that and find a way to honor her memory um, as you move forward. You know, Tony, you, you said one of the hardest things that you had to do was to tell your son what had happened to his sister. And I, I know that had to be terribly hard, but that son also is a great motivator as a parent to put one foot in front of the other and keep moving on because your job as a parent's not done. You, you lost a daughter, but you have another child that you have to take care of, and y'all are in the same situation, correct? Yes. You have a four-year-old, yes. and so you have to be there, and, and, and he deserves to have all of his mom, all of his dad, he, he deserves to not lose out because you close off your heart, you, you close off your emotions, you close off your feelings. He deserves to have both of you. You're it for him. So you've got to take care of you so he doesn't get cheated. And that doesn't make it easy. It just makes it necessary. And that does keep you moving, Tony. It certainly does. It's, uh, you know, you're, you have to heal yourselves. And hopefully you're getting some help with the trauma and the grief. They really are two different things. And um, at the same time, try and come together as much as possible. Um, giving each other the time and the space to grieve in each in your own way. Um, but it is, you can get through it. I'll just say that. It's not easy. We'll be right back. Monday on an all-new Dr. Phil. It is the number one issue on everyone's mind. Things you can do to make ends meet. Fighting inflation. I tell you what's on sale. I tell you what coupon to use and how much you're going to pay. From couponing? You say that you saved $6,000 the first year. It's actually $10,000. To cutting consumer costs. How much is this cut down on what you spend? It probably saves my family about two to $3,000 a year. That's Monday. You know, I mentioned earlier, what if, and both of you have said that you do play what if over and over in your head and the why, and there's nothing I can say that's going to get you to stop that. What I can do is ask you that if, if you 
run the what if question in your head, at least answer it. <clears throat> when you say, what if I had taken her home that day? Why did I leave her? If you're going to do that, you have to complete the question and the answer or it will drive you crazy. It's a loop you get into, Angel, where it's like being on a racetrack with no exit ramp. You, you, you get on this loop and you can't get off of it unless you answer the question. You say, well, what if I had done A, B, or C? Well, you can ask the question, but you must answer it. Because if you answer it, then you will understand the futility of asking it. Because you said, why didn't I take her home that day? Well, I can answer that because I'm on the outside looking in. You didn't take her home that day because th this was a wonderful day for her. She had just won an award for creativity. She was skipping out of the cafeteria. You can't go grab her up mid-skip and say, you're coming home with me. Well, why? Well, there's no reason why. You just are. Well, why? It, there, that would have been a conversation that you could not have won. You couldn't have won that debate, right? And she would have thought you were insane. So you can, you can ask the question, but you need to answer it and play it out to the end because that's the only way you will figure out that you were being a rational mom. You had her in a school that you knew about and you did the things a reasonable mother would do. You did the things a reasonable father would do. You're going to feel guilty until you don't. That's going to continue to haunt you. It's really more regret than guilt. Guilt is when you say, I wish I had done something I didn't do. There was nothing to do. You did everything you could do. They had to handcuff you to keep you out of the building. You had a much more focused agenda than the police. Um, it's the the system is not perfect, and it was very imperfect that day. And I, I'm really, really sorry for that. And there's sorry doesn't fix it. Sorry doesn't help it. It was wrong. It was flawed, and many people paid the price for that. And that's why you're working as hard as you are, Tony, to try to change this. And I said before, we know a lot more about school shooters than we're using to its maximum impact right now. We know a lot more about school shooters. Can we predict who's going to do it? No, but there's a path that they get on that's knowable. And we know more about school shooters than we're using. And I've said that and working with some experts on this and there are things that we can do. And you're gonna find that part of reinventing yourself will be learning to understand how to make a choice to live with this in a way that you honor her, you don't forget her, but you learn to remember her in a way that it makes you feel warm inside instead of hurting inside. And that's not yet. Uh, and I understand that, and that's why I say you have to be patient with yourself. I have a few very important steps that I think you can take that will help you and your family when we come back. Well, after the Parkland school shooting on uh, 14th of 2018, survivors from the 1999 Columbine High School shooting joined me and expressed just how much that day had impacted the years following uh, that deadly tragedy. Survivor's guilt is the sort of thing I didn't anticipate where you don't feel worthy. It's like, why, why did I make it? What was my purpose? Why was it them and not me? When I was running out of the school, I shielded myself with my peers as I was getting shot at. So I had tremendous survivor's guilt for years that 
I was just trying to protect myself, and it was survival instincts. When another shooting happens, it brings it all back. It's re-victimizing all over again. You relate to the sounds, the emotions. You're square one again. It affects me terribly. Um, I'm now a mother of two, and I send them into this environment that I feel isn't safe. It's a struggle every day to send them off to school. I had struggled with drugs for a while. Once I had my son, I couldn't handle my own grief and my own struggles, let alone try to deal with raising a small human being. It was too much pressure and I drank through it. I was your age when, when I went through my shooting, so I feel a connection to you. I wish I could take your pain away. And we love you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I think whatever you guys need, advocate for yourselves. One of the biggest regrets I have is people telling me this is normal to feel this way. But long term, and the longer you let it go, it manifests into way bigger things. I'm so proud of you and proud of your voices. And we are in awe of your strength. And you give us strength every day. So um, that is what keeps us going. Please take care of yourselves. It's a journey that you're going to go through for the rest of your life. And I'm so sorry. I, I'm playing that because I want everyone to know, um, e everyone in Uvalde, uh, for you guys to know, for Chloe, um, for yourselves as, as parents, for you guys as parents to know, that is, as I was talking to them almost 20 years after the fact, they were saying that because they didn't get the kind of help that they, they should have been provided and stay with it, that it continued to dismantle their lives for the next 20 years. These things have a profound effect on people. This is going to change who you are. It has already changed who you are. You, you will never be who you were the day before this happened. You, you know that, right? Yes, you guys know that, right? You'll never be the people you were before this happened. Now, I can sit up here and tell you otherwise that you'll get over, but the truth is, you'll never be the same people you were. The question is, what choice are you gonna make about who you are gonna be? Mitch Album is a very dear friend of mine, and uh, you know, in his book, Tuesdays with Maury, uh, he very eloquently said, that death ends a life, it does not end a relationship. And your relationship with A. Marie will go on forever. You should not run from your grief. And your people grieve differently. You're gonna have bad days. On days when you're maybe doing a little better and you can help her and lift her up on those days. Then you're a terrible day when you're maybe a little more balanced that day and you can lift him up on that day. I hope you'll allow yourselves and each other to, to grieve and, uh, and, and be patient with one another. Is there something you really care about? Something you want to do something about? A cause you want to join? A social injustice you want to protest? but you don't know where to start. Well, this is the place. Text Phil, P-H-I-L, at 88500. Smooth dark chocolate, refreshing peppermint. Yeah, I know this has been hard to um, watch and participate in. I hope that um, it causes us to say enough's enough and too much is too much. This does not have to keep happening. Uh, there are steps we can take to change this. And there are, there are things we can do to keep our kids safer in school. 
there is good news that while this gets a lot of headlines and it should, schools basically are statistically a very safe place for children to be um, until they're not. And we need to make them safer and safer and safer. And if you go to drphil.com or to my Facebook page, you'll find steps and information there that you can participate in and help. And we'll have links to everything that you're doing. Thank you. Um, so you can be part of uh, those efforts. Um, I, I want to thank all of my guests today. You know, they didn't have to come here, but they want to use this situation. They want to use this, this tragedy to help stop it occurring so other parents don't have to sit and go through what these parents have all had to go through. Uh, before we go, we want to express our condolences to the 21 families from Uvalde. And I'd like to take a moment to remember A. Marie and everyone else who lost their lives that day. A. Marie was a gentle soul. She was the bravest little girl out there. Sassy, yet very kind and sweet. She didn't care to fit in if she did not believe it was the right thing to do. Her intentions were so pure because she was always looking out for people and made sure everyone had a friend. She was a protector, a defender, and the best big sister to our son. We, of course, will never forget Gina and the 16 others who lost their lives that day at Parkland. Our hearts also go out to all the families who tragically lost their loved ones on Valentine's Day 2018. Gina was my wonderful 14-year-old daughter. Gina was bright, lovely, beautiful, smart. She was active in our local church. She was a Girl Scout. She was a freshman. She was a member of the high school color guard. An amazing daughter. A great big sister to her brother Anthony. And uh, we miss her every day. hearts and prayers go out to all families who have lost a loved one in a mass shooting. Thank you for joining us today.